today many people following our, your ideas about leadership, about self-development, about coaching. So what is your work about? What's my work about? I think it's better you reframe that question is what is your life about? Because I have no separation as to what's my life, what's my work, what is my this and that, I just have life. So, so have you and so have everybody. You don't have anything other than your life. The only thing that you have is life, the rest is all imagination. The only thing we have is life. So how to make this life happen at its peak every moment? Everybody has known some peaks. People have known peaks of happiness, joy, competence, uh, you know, ecstasy, compassion, love. Everybody has experienced this at some point. But the problem is sustainability, they are not able to sustain it. They hold those moments as cherished moments as if the <laughs> rest of the time they are not capable of it. This has happened simply, see suppose, uh, suppose uh, because you are German I am saying this, suppose you guys, you are making good cars, let me acknowledge you, I am also driving one. <laughs> I am, even my motorcycle is German <laughs> right now. So you are making good machines, suppose you are… you make a motorcycle or a car which starts once… only once a month it starts, rest of the time you can't start it. You will junk it or no? So right now people are like this, once in a way they are in their peak, rest of the time they are down, simply because they have not engineered them properly, themselves properly. So, my work and my life is about helping people to engineer themselves so that they are at the peak of their experience. Because when it comes to life, there are only two things, what you call as my life. Profoundness of experience and impactfulness of your activity, this is all there is. Without profoundness of experience, impactfulness of activity is hugely crippled. Without a strong experience within you, you cannot impact the world in a big way. So, activity is about impact. Life is about profoundness of experience. People may think, no, that's not what I want. I want money, I want family, I want love, I want children, I want wife, I want husband. Well, all this you want only because you believe it will bring some profoundness of experience. So that's what I'm saying, how you do it is up to you. But profoundness of experience and impact in the activity that we've… maximum impact that we can create with activity is all there is in life. For this, you need to be a well-engineered machine. And that's my work, that's why Inner Engineering and that's my life, Inner Engineering. How do I get profoundness experience to have that inner, inner strength in me? See, uh, right now your whole experience of life is limited to five sense organs. What you see, what you hear, what you smell, what you taste, what you touch. From this you have gathered data. From that data, you're thinking things up. Right now, from where you come in Europe, too much significance has been given to human thought. In the yogic culture, we don't give any significance to your thought but we are very, very interested in the quality of your attention. Because human attention is the most important thing. It is human attention which opens up doors. Most significant discoveries and realizations in the world happened when people had a very keen sense of attention. Say, for example, all these things happen in Europe, so I'm taking European examples. <laughs> An apple fell. Apples were always falling, an apple fell, somebody was attentive, not thinking, just attentive and loss of gravity. Well, a man tired of his work went and got into a bathtub, water overflowed, you have loss of flotation. A coffee kettle boiled over, there you have the steam locomotive or steam engine. Like this, most significant scientific discoveries also happen when human beings had the attention, not thought process. Because thought is just recycling of your existing data, nothing new will come out of it. Thought is a way of exploring the permutations of… permutations and combinations of what you already know. You cannot know something new with your thought process, but attention can open up any door. 
if your attention is keen enough, intense enough and can be sustained, there is no door in the universe that cannot be opened for you. Dear Seekers, what is this phenomenon we call attention? Have you ever noticed how it slips, how it moves, how it dances from one thing to another without any seeming effort or direction? Why is it that our attention can be so elusive, so difficult to harness? Consider for a moment a hummingbird. It moves from flower to flower with such grace, touching each one just briefly before moving to the next. Our mind in many ways is like that hummingbird, flitting from thought to thought, never quite settling. But unlike the hummingbird, our mind often does not move with grace. It is more like a storm which is wild and untamed. The modern world is a grand stage of distractions. It is a circus of the unessential. Our senses are barraged from every angle with the dazzling and the dramatic, the tragic and the trivial. The more complex society becomes, the more fragmented our attention seems to become. But why is it so? Why can't we just choose to focus? The truth is, attention is not just about choice, it is also about conditioning. Our attention is conditioned by the world around us, by the media we consume, by the conversations we engage in, and by the thoughts we entertain. It is shaped by habit, it is shaped by desire, and it is shaped by aversion. To understand attention is to understand the very fabric of the human mind. The ancient sages of the East have always emphasized the power of attention, the power of awareness. In the tradition of Zen, there is a saying, where attention goes, energy flows. So if you want to know what you are committed to, Look at where your attention goes. Is it to your passions, to your fears or to your dreams? Is it to your work, to your play or to your love? To master attention is to master oneself. It is a path of meditation. It is a path of mindfulness. But what is meditation? It is not about the absence of thought, but the presence of of attention, a choiceless awareness. In meditation, we train the mind to become still not by force but by fascination, by becoming deeply interested in the moment, in the now, in the workings of our own inner world. Attention is like a muscle and like any muscle, it can be strengthened with practice. Each time you bring your attention back to the present moment, you are exercising that muscle. And as you strengthen your attention, you'll find something miraculous happens. The chatter of the mind begins to quiet. The waves of emotions begin to still. A sense of peace and clarity emerges from within. But do not be fooled, dear seekers. This is not a journey for the faint-hearted. It requires patience, it requires dedication, it requires courage. Because as you turn your attention inward, you will come face to face with your own shadows, your own limits. But in that confrontation lies the opportunity for liberation. Because it is only by facing our inner darkness that we can step into the light. So dear seekers, I ask you now, 
where is your attention in this very moment is it on these words on the ideas they provoke or on the emotions they stir within you or has it drifted to the worries of the day the plans for tomorrow or the regrets of the past become an observer of your own attention watch it learn its ways its habits its tendencies and in watching you will learn not just about your attention but about yourself because attention is the mirror of the soul and in that mirror you can see your own reflection in all its chaos and all its beauty so then let us embark on this journey of attention together with the curiosity of a child and the discipline of a warrior let us discover the power that lies in the simple act of paying attention because in that power in that awareness lies the key to our freedom the key to our enlightenment remember attention is not just a part of your consciousness it is the doorway to your consciousness and how you use that door how you tend to that threshold defines not only the quality of your life but also the very essence of your being